Okay, so story time today, which actually has everything to do with what we're making. I know, it happens sometimes. Anyway, as you may know, because I talked about it in the last video with Nora Body Love's winner for the Project Soapway thing, I have a bunch of soaps that the Sudzers have made, right? That I just buy from the Sudzers all the time. And I just have this big back stock of soaps. And then whenever we run out in the showers, I go into the back stock and I grab a soap. And I was out in my shower today. So I went to grab a soap. And this is the soap. Isn't it pretty? Yeah, I know. It's freaking gorgeous. I love it. And I'm pretty sure that this is Alaska soaps and such. I mean, I had opened it, but it was on top of her business card. So I'm pretty sure it's hers. But anyway, this triggered a memory for me because Alaska soap and such had sent me some dried, uh, let's call them vegetable fibers, right? Following a video that I did on like silk fibers in general and said that I should try them in soap. And I was like, oh, yeah, right. We should totally do that because there was the question about whether or not the Tessa was considered vegan. And I'm still unclear on that because people continue to comment on that video. Some say yes and some say no. I don't know. I think it's one of those things where it's just kind of up to the person that's doing the interpreting because there's no hard and fast rules about this. Anyway, she sent me some silks of the plant variety. And so I'd completely forgotten about it. And I thought, what a fun week. We should do that and test these things, you know? She also sent me this thing, which is really cool. She's from Alaska, in case the name didn't give it away. But yeah, this is like the coolest thing ever. I have no idea what it is. I mean, obviously it's like a map of Alaska with all the cool stuff on there. But also on the tag, it says dishwasher safe, machine washable, bleach when needed. So I don't actually know what it is, but it's cool and I like it. So that's fun. Thank you for having sent that to me. I know that I already told you thank you like in a, an email, but thanks again. And that's what we are doing this week is we are testing some vegetable silks in soap really to see if they impart the same, you know, properties into your finished soap as like a Tessa silk. See, story time actually related to the video. The problem is the story time relating to the video means I am going to feel really weird when I say, I will tell you more about it. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. You know, feels weird. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for week 16 of year three. And as I said, this week we are testing some vegetable silks in soap to see what they do. And I quite like that. It will actually also give us an opportunity to talk about making Tessa silk fiber soaps in general, because I don't think I've ever shown a video of that on the channel, although I have talked about it. So we're gonna have a test week. We are going to use dandelion fluff. We are going to use green clematis, yellow clematis, some sort of clematis for sure, and some other things. And at the end of the week, we are going to do a big test, a lather test, and I will give my final thoughts on all of these different, you know, processes and infusing lye solutions, as well as the best way to, you know, incorporate them. It's in the lye, so you just, that's what you need. But I'll talk about it more, you know, in the video. So let's get to the video and we will, uh, Talk about the very first one that I decided to make and test and whatever, you know, there. Okay, so this week we are doing one of my most favorite segments on the channel. We're, you know, testing weird stuff in soap. Uh, Alaska Soaps and such actually sent me a whole bunch of different, you know, vegetable-based fibers, plant-based fibers to try in soap following a conversation we were having sort of offhand about vegan stuff and whatnot. And I mused whether or not 
you know, pesa silk or mulberry silk were considered vegan because they come from, you know, silkworms and moths and stuff in the case of the mulberry silk. And she had sent these to me and I completely forgot about them. So I thought, why not? Let's try these in soap and see if it imparts the same sort of benefits that you get from like a tessa silk or a mulberry silk. And so that's what we're doing today. We are going to be using first up the dandelion fluff. She sent me two different versions of it. One is the not aged dandelion fluff and the other is the aged. So you can see the one that's not aged, it's a little bit darker and it's not, it's quite a bit more dense. And so we're going to do two different batches of soap with all of this, putting the dandelion fluff directly into the lye solution, which is where you put in the tussa silk or the mulberry silk when you are making a silk soap. And you can't see me, but I'm using air quotes when I say silk soap. Because that's an interesting thing in and of itself, right? Like the benefits of tussa silk or mulberry silk to soap are that it imparts a silkier feeling, a nice slip to the bark. That's really what we do know about it. That's kind of it for both of them. But we have all kinds of people online saying all kinds of things about, you know, Tessa Silk or Mulberry Silk. This one, you know, from Wholesale Supplies Plus, it's pretty accurate. It says it also adds the label appeal of silk amino acids. Okay, fine. And then we have people online saying that the benefits of Mulberry Silk is it Prevents wrinkles increasing across your face and neck as you sleep, helping your skin stay healthy and smooth. That's a bold claim there. Mulberry leaves are rich in antioxidants, so that's fine. But we've got some people saying some really wild claims on the internet as far as what Tussa Silk or Mulberry Silk actually does to soap. Things that we can't really say, by the way, because it's soap. It cleans. There are laws around it. We've gone over those laws a lot, so you can check out those videos if you want. But I thought for the slipping part, for the silkier feel of the bar, maybe we'll get that same, you know, benefit from dandelion. Because here's the thing about, you know, the Tessa silk and the mulberry silk. They're both expensive, aren't they? And they say that you're supposed to use... Well, actually, that's a confusing thing, too. Nobody knows much of anything about this process. They're all over the board because you can use anywhere... When you're talking about Tessa Silk or Mulberry Silk, anywhere from one cotton ball sized, you know, thing of the silk per pound of oils or per five pound batch. And as you can see, I used a whole lot more in mine, like a lot, significantly more. Because that's another thing. What size cotton balls are we talking about? I have giant cotton balls. I buy the big guys, you know? So, and also just that range. It can be in per pound of oil or for the whole five pound batch, it's very strange. So anyway, point is I used a whole bunch and it's not expensive as all, at all, right? Dandelions are not expensive. They're, they just grow out in your yard, whether you want them to or not. I found this to be the most interesting part with all of this, how oily it was, right? There's a lot of oils that were actually extracted from those dandelions, which I thought was pretty cool. And then that sent me on a whole path of, well, what does dandelion oil do? Is dandelion oil a thing? And to answer that, like, what does dandelion oil do? I don't know. It's more of the same stuff. It, there's stuff out here that says it's antibacterial, it's antifungal, detoxifies the skin, clears out the pores, gets rid of acne, and prevents acne breakouts in the future. Okay. That's very interesting. But then when I googled how to make dandelion oil, it says to take the dandelions and then infuse them with olive oil and then just like let them steep for a long time, right? Or heat them, which is what really just happened with, you know, the, the lye solution. But that didn't include olive oil. But if dandelion oil is made by a using olive oil as your carrier, aren't those the benefits of olive oil that we're talking about i don't know i don't know if it's possible to buy dandelion oil like pure dandelion oil we're gonna find that out we're gonna search up dandelion oil bulk so i'm getting a lot of hits for a dandelion extract uh and then i have a dandelion herbal oil by dr adorable here on you know ebay and the ingredients are dandelion oil and olive oil so, so no pure dandelion oil, right? 
but lots of tinctures and stuff, as well as extracts. So I'm thinking maybe not dandelion lion oil, but maybe dandelion extract is what's being pulled from the dandelion, from the dandelion fluff. I don't know. Point is, it's super oily, and so I am going to end up with a super fat maybe. Okay, and onto the pour of this guy. And you notice with the batter here, it's actually very, very dark. It's darker than my batter normally is. Now, with my oils that I used for this, it was just my basic three, so coconut, olive, and palm. And I have a 5% super fat with all of this. And I went ahead and put the kaolin clay directly into the oils before I put the lye solution in. So it should be a fairly light bar. I am actually concerned that the white isn't going to whiten up the white portions aren't going to whiten up enough for this yellow to really be seen. But in my experience with using, you know, like soap nuts or tea or beer or whatnot, usually the oil, the batter itself will lighten up after saponification if you're using oils that are light in color, right? And coconut oil and palm oil are both white. So I'm thinking it's going to whiten up to the way that I want it, but I really don't know at this point. But yeah, to the actual benefits of dandelion extract, well, there's all kinds of information on that out there too. It's wild. All these people saying things, you know? And like, there is a difference because if you are saying that there is dan benefits of dandelion extract for your skin or whatever, applying it topically, okay, that's one thing. So anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antifungal, reduces the appearance of wrinkles and fine lines, minimizes dark spots, firms the skin. I mean, okay, fine, but... When you start making those claims in your soap, it becomes a little interesting because A, it's not a completely, you know, 100% concentrated solution of a dandelion extract, of an extract in general, right? So there's that. Two, it, it just stays on your, your body, your skin for, you know, 30 seconds or whatever, however long it takes you to wash your, your skin. So on one hand, while I can say, yeah, there are benefits to the extract for sure, I don't know if that's really going to impart throughout the soap. And of course, that's one of the things that we always talk about. We, we philosophically talk about it within the soap making world because we are all very aware that those are the sorts of things that you can't say regardless. So I don't know. I, it could be. I'm going to go ahead and make myself an awesome dandelion face soap. And, you know, I'll let you know if I like my skin better after all of that. Because you never know. I make my face soaps with a lot of cool stuff that I feel helps out with different stuff. Just don't say it. You can't talk about it, you know? But anyway, let's go to the uh, cut of this and see what happens inside. And also, that's just a fun way to move your mic around when you got it all in a clump in one place. As I did, because I am a disaster. Okay, and on to the cut of this guy. And yeah, that top... It looks actually kind of cool, right? And if I'm going for dandelions or the, you know, nod to flowers and stuff, if this is going to be part of my summer line, then I think that works with that top. It's kind of fun. But for the scent also, which I did not talk about, I used a dandelion scent from, I think, Nature's Garden. I don't know. But used that for all of this and then decided for all the bars that we're going to do, it's going to be a floral line because we are using you know, fibers and fluff and stuff from flowers. And yeah, that did not lighten up the way that I wanted it to. But also I could have just used more micas and then the yellow would have stood out a little bit better. But in the future, I will make sure to use, you know, some more kale and clay or perhaps even a titanium dioxide in the white portions if I really want to continue on with the white and the yellow, as well as using more yellow to ensure we get a darker color. Now, these bars are actually very, very hard, which I find very interesting because my basic three, while they are hard, the point is I haven't actually intrinsically changed anything about this batch of soap from any other batch of soap that I've made with the basic three, right? They're, I didn't super fat it anymore. I didn't do a water discount. The only difference was, you know, quite a bit of dandelion fluff in the lye solution and they're very very firm like incredibly firm it was tough to cut through them and i am trying to figure out 
because obviously the difference is the extract or the dandelion, uh, you know, fluff rather, but why? You know what I mean? And so I don't know. I'm going to look into that and I'm going to do some more research on dandelion extract and dandelion fluff just generally. And so, you know, before we talk next for like tomorrow, because I'm very fascinated by this process and I want to know more about it because that's just kind of how I roll. But these soaps will be tested around with all of the other ones to see if they actually impart that silky feel that you get from like a Tessa silk or a mulberry silk. So there's that. So first up, the color shifts are completely wild because the yellow obviously did not come out the way that I wanted it to, like at all. Never going to be able to see it with this lighting. But the parts that were supposed to stay white stayed white, but the color of the actual batter didn't suggest like they were going to. Very cool. Love that a lot. And also just seeing like the oil that sort of comes off of them. I'll try to show that to you better tomorrow. It's really very oily. Very interesting. But I thought that was very cool, obviously. But then just like the remains of all of it, it really made me want to dump in, you know, the the rest of it into the soap just to see what would happen. So we're definitely doing that guy tomorrow for sure to see what happens when it's actually in the soap. So anyway, there's that. These will be available in my summer line probably because I am doing all, you know, florals with these soaps. And it just makes sense to put that closer to like May or June is my thinking. So they'll be at soapandclay.com at that point. But for now, they're just here in my hand. I can't, should never be given props. But yeah, if you're interested in seeing the rest of the process, the other fibers that we use, and of course the tests, you know, subscribe, do the thing. That'd be cool. For the Sudzers who have subscribed and have done the things, hey, you're way cooler than those people that don't know how to click a button. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you being the Sudzer community. You guys are amazing. And I know I say that all the time, but it's never not true. I'm a bit rushed right now, though, because I just got a text message that I need to be on a board meeting. So I'm going to go deal with the HOA. Wildly less fun than this. But I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of testing weird stuff in soap. It'll be fun. Bye. Thank you.